Hey everyone, so today I'm going to talk about my top 10, though it's not really a ranking of which of the 10 I like the most, but just 10 total drama conflicts that stand out to me and why I enjoy them. I tried picking conflicts that didn't just peak and mainly happened during one episode, and the rest of it was just bland anticipation. I tried to pick conflicts that hit, you know? So, I'm not going to rank them from 10 to 1, I'm just going to talk about 10 that stand out to me. So, I'm going to go with the most recent season, though it's technically the spin-off, and talk about the Ice Dancers and the Police Cadets. Both of them are so competitive in their own ways that it was great just seeing them go back and forth throughout the entire season, and they definitely carried most of the season. It was a conflict that you needed to see carry out from the very beginning to the very end, so I'm glad that both teams made it to the finale. There were moments where they had to work together and make up, which led to some nice moments, but it of course would fail, since we didn't want them to be friends. So this pair is from Pakatu Island, and I am talking about Max and Scarlet. Honestly, I am mainly mentioning them because I think having a representative of the third generation would be great here. Max constantly undermines Scarlet, though it's very unjustified, and Scarlet is not only tired of Max's incompetence, but his irritating and braggart attitude, where she eventually loses it on him. If it wasn't so overtly cartoony, and there was just a bit more juiciness to the conflict, it would have been better in my opinion. So I had to put Chef Hatchet and Izzy in. Since Chef Hatchet is not a competitor, there's a lack of depth and there's only so far that they could go with this conflict, since he's a grown man also and she's a teenage girl. But these two having some of the most random battles throughout the show was so funny to me and I just had to include it in. Their conflict did start to die in the third season though, especially since Izzy was very under the radar in that season, compared to her other two seasons. So this one comes from Revenge of the Island, and it is Joe and Lightning. This conflict is literally the only one that carried through on both seasons that the second generation cast was eligible to partake in. Lightning continuously calls Joe a boy throughout the season, which obviously pisses Joe off, especially with her insecurities about her gender. It also doesn't help that Joe uses people for their benefit and tosses them out when they are no longer convenient, without having any finesse about it. Lightning is also painfully dumb, and both of them are self-centered egomaniacs. In both seasons, Joe decides to align with Lightning, and Joe betrays Lightning too prematurely, and Lightning always gets a last laugh as she gets her karma soon after on both seasons after she turns on him. Very entertaining. So another conflict from Revenge of the Island that I'm adding is Brick and Joe. While you could claim that there were moments where they were borderline friends or had borderline crushes on one another, they were mainly enemies throughout the season and they ended their duration together as enemies, so I'm putting them here. I could never take my eyes off them and I was always interested in seeing what would happen with them since they were so entertaining. Both of them are so competitive and want to be leaders, but their differing moral code and beliefs was what fueled their conflict from beginning to end. It would have been nice had Brick lasted a bit longer, or honestly if he was also in All Stars with Joe. So it kind of... It was still good, but it could have been a lot better. So I'm kind of shocked that I'm putting this next conflict here, but it really stands out to me. And it's also another example of a conflict between an adult and a teenager, or should I say teenagers. Yes, I'm talking about Blaine vs. Gidget. For a conflict that only existed for about 3-4 to four episodes, I was thoroughly entertained watching the three of them interact with one another throughout the world tour aftermaths. Of course, you have Blaney stirring the pot between Bridget and Jeff as they are having relationship issues, and then her losing her mind once they made up. The three of them have to deal with co-hosting the show from then on, though Gidget was obviously used to it just being the two of them from the previous season, and it eventually leads to Blingley kidnapping Bridget, causing Jeff to pay her back at every opportunity possible, and the revenge was just oh so sweet. I really liked watching them on this world tour season. So the next conflict I'm talking about is Courtney and Gwen. 
honestly, I feel like I have to put them here, due to them being a major storyline for two seasons, and the conflict is different from most of the other conflicts. This one is about them liking a guy and then it becoming about cheating, where one was cheated on and the other was the cheatee slash other woman. They then try to make it about the friendship, like their friendship meant more than either their relationship with Duncan, when this friendship didn't exist before the triangle even happened. But they did become friends in the fourth season together, with Duncan completely out of the picture. Of course, things went out the window for both of them for contrived reasons. The conflict is great in theory and okay in execution, but it could have been a lot better, especially in All Stars. So I had to add Duncan and Harold onto this list. Going through the list of conflicts and friendships throughout the series, I noticed that the dynamics between the Generation 1 men are very flat and very underdeveloped. Due to this, Duncan and Harold are the only guys who make it on this list regarding their conflict. Duncan and his two lackeys decide to bully Harold for no reason essentially, and I like how Harold always stood up for himself and even got his shots in at Duncan, where the few did become more individualistic with Jit it being the two of them in the second season, and they even had cordial and cool moments at times where they got along. I like that Harold wasn't a pushover, and I've eventually still ended up with them being in conflict with one another. Just two strong men with two strong and polarizing as well as flawed personalities just going at it. Heather and Lashana are next. Wow, Heather and Lashana's conflict is really iconic, though some of the microaggressions at the beginning were so not it. I like how both of them are strong, powerful women who are severely flawed but enjoyable people in their own way and each having their own group of people in the first season. In season 2, Gwen was not a factor in their conflict unlike in the first season, so seeing those two continue with their banter was really funny, especially as it is more individualistic. Them becoming on good terms was nice, kind of, though very rushed, and while I was glad that they became enemies in the third season, the execution was pretty poor and kind of acted like what happened in the second season didn't happen. Still, when you think of conflicts on this show, Heather and Oshana are one of the very, very, very first ones that you think of. Heather and Gwen is definitely the most prominent conflict throughout the entire series. I mean, what do I really have to say about these two? They were on the same team for all four of their seasons, and their conflict is the main one for the first season, where Heather messes with Gwen several times and Gwen gets back at Heather too at various points. Their feud continues for Gwen's short time in season 2, where Heather caught onto Gwen acting weird, and it continued during the third season, with Gwen having the upper advantage, and then they almost became allies by the time of Gwen's elimination, due to them being so sick of Courtney and needing one another in that moment. And right when you think that they wouldn't interact in Season 5 at all, despite being on the same team, their bad blood started in the finale again, which is most likely going to be both of their last experiences and appearances on the show. So it's kind of nice that they still started as enemies and ended as enemies throughout four seasons. So I definitely do have a list of honorable mentions that I could have put on here, but I just missed it. Anne-Maria and Zoe's conflict was about a love triangle, but I don't like how there wasn't really a resolution to it yet. But when the two did go at it, I was kind of interested in it. Anne-Maria and Joe is also a very interesting conflict, though it rarely got any attention. But when you saw them interact with one another, because they're both such aggressive women, it's just so hilarious just seeing them go back and forth and back and forth. I do think Scott and Zoe definitely had some potential since they were on decent terms, there was mainly Scott manipulating Zoe, but they only became enemies because Scott eliminated Mike and Zoe wanted to do everything for Mike, but the aggression she had for him was kind of fun. It kind of sucked that it was very ignored during All Stars. So Joe and Cameron had different beliefs and different mindsets from the very beginning of ROTI to the very end, but it culminated with Joe forcing Cameron to be her ally, though she rejected his offer the episode or two earlier, and she just bullying him around until he turned the tables on her and voted her out. 
they didn't get to interact in All Stars, so I couldn't put it any higher. Courtney and Heather was a conflict that showed very, very minor signs in the very first season with the oatmeal throw that Courtney tried to do against Heather, but it was mainly ignored until the second half of World Tour, where they both had crushes on Alejandro, and that was when they both started really going at one another. I don't really remember them doing anything against one another in All Stars. If it got more focus, I would have put them on the list, and not in the honorable mentions. Courtney and Harrow didn't like one another from the beginning, but it was a minor conflict compared to the others on the killer past. Of course, Harold caused Courtney to be voted out unfairly and rigged her out of the game, and of course she is very, very mad at this. But they don't really interact that much, despite it being such a huge event in the franchise overall. So you see the buildup of Heather getting annoyed with Beth, and Beth being annoyed with Heather bossing her around and only using her, and I really liked how they went at it in the Paint Bar Deer Hunt, but it only lasted for that episode. In action, Beth ignored Heather and paid her complete dust, but from the little we saw, their conflict was great. It just didn't get much focus. Heather and Lindsay falls under very similar pretenses as Heather and Beth, where Lindsay is being used by Heather, and she starts getting annoyed by Heather, who doesn't care for Lindsay at all, and Lindsay of course curses Heather out very nicely, but it only happens in one episode, and it happens after Heather eliminates Lindsay. Lindsay ignores Heather for the entirety of action, and Lindsay isn't around long enough in the other two seasons to interact much with Heather. So, it kind of fizzled with Lindsay's elimination in Island. Courtney and Lindsay was a shocking but kind of interesting conflict in the second season, where Lindsay wanted to prove herself as being smarter than she's perceived and wants to be the leader, while Courtney's annoyed at Lindsay for having pretty privilege and having everything handed to her, while also making fun of her for being dumb. It didn't get much focus after this, so it's on the honorable mentions list. Sky and Sugar is a conflict that I think would have been one of the greatest had it gotten more focus throughout the season, and if it didn't just take place in their final two episodes together, where Sugar turns on Sky after them agreeing to be in alliance to take down the power couple of Sean and Jasmine. So that is my list and honorable mentions of the conflicts that stand out to me throughout the franchise. It was very interesting to kind of look back and see what took place regarding the conflicts during this very long franchise that is actually continuing and I'm looking forward as to what they will come up with next. There will be another list on the friendships on the franchise and I'm looking forward to that.